for this day, this special and gifted day that you have given to us. To thank you, God, for everything surrounding us, everything going in our lives, good and bad, we thank you for it. All the pleasant things, God, but this morning we're going to thank you for even tough times. Because when we think about you, God, it's you and it's only you that brought us through. So we thank you, God, for the chance to come here this morning and give you glory, give you honor, and give you praise. We thank you, God, for this area we live in. The city of Tallahassee, Leon County, the state of Florida. We thank you for those officials that were elected to push forward the needs of the people. We thank you, Lord, for them that we chose, and we thank you even more this morning for the ones that we did not want to choose. And we ask you this morning, God, that you touch the minds and hearts of all the politicians, oh God, on every level not only in the state of Florida, but in the entire United States of America. We thank you for the global leaders, oh God, and those that serve the global governments across this world, oh God. That they be touched and brought home to serve under your will, under your way. And help us, God, and strengthen us, God, that we don't get caught in the politics of the world today, but rather we get caught up in you. Because we know that you can take care of anything and everything that is wrong. So we thank you, God, for your wondrous ways and your marvelous works. We thank you, God, for our loved ones, oh God. We, we, we thank you for our spouses and our families, oh God. We thank you for our children, oh God. Oh, bless them, God, that you touch them, God, that you open up their minds and hearts to receive you as their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And knowing that they will have a long life with you. Thank you for keeping them and protecting them, God. Thank you for enduring them with talent and scholarship and academic achievements, oh God. Thank you for their love of their families, their, their strength, oh God, and their willingness to keep going through every day, day by day. Thank you for the parents, oh God, that are teaching and instructing our children, oh God. Thank you for the love that we shower down on each and every one, oh God, through our family. Our holy, godly family. Thank you, God, this morning for teachers, professors, instructors, trainers, oh God. We thank you, God, that they give us knowledge, oh God. They give us skills, oh God. They give us a way to make a way because of you. Hallelujah. Thank you for our pastor this morning. Strengthen him, oh God. Give him all the glory and honor that he deserves, oh God. Fill him with a fresh anointing this morning. And he comes to break the bread of life with us. Bless the work of his hands and every place his feet have trod. Thank you for the prayers that he has lifted up for the congregation over the years. Thank you for the great places that he will lead us to in you, Jesus. 
Thank you for the unity of faith. Thank you for the unity of our people. Thank you for the love that we have one for another. Thank you for bringing us to a close of 2022 and making 2023 look so bright and lit up because of your grace and your mercy and the glory that you shine down on your people, oh God. Help us, God, be the light this coming year. Instead of looking for the light, help us to be the light. Hallelujah. Thank you for our musicians this morning, God. Thank you for the strength and their willingness to come here to lead us in song and in praise and worship, oh God. To set the stage, oh God, for us to continue in worship and praise of you, oh God, during this worship experience. Bless their hearts, bless their families, oh God. Thank you for our first lady, oh God. Thank you for the love that she has brought forth, oh God, the friendliness, oh God, and the faithfulness to come and be with us each and every Sunday, oh God. Thank you for the fellowship, oh God. Thank you for her family, oh God, and all that she holds dear. Thank you for the deacons, oh God, the armor bearers, of you, the uh, ushers, oh God, the welcomers, and everybody in their respective places. In the name of Jesus. We thank God for it. And as we continue, let us be sure to lift up with our hearts and our minds and our souls the name of Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God who was slain before the beginning of the world, so that we may be saved. Hallelujah. In the name of the Master of all, the Redeemer of all, the Savior of all, the Sustainer of all, Almighty God, His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, have your way in this place this morning. Have your way this morning. Have your way, Lord, this morning, oh God. In the name of Jesus, come on and put your hands together and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to His name. I won't Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Our scripture reading for this morning will come from Psalms 57, uh, verse 5. Psalms 57, verse 5. Excuse me, verse 7. It's 7 and 7. Read. My heart is fixed. Oh God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Wake up, my glory. Awake the sauces and heart. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. Be thy exalted, O God, of the heavens. Let the glory be above all the earth. Amen. 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 Dear Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for everything that you have done. We thank you, Father, for what you're going to do. But Father, we ask it for such our hearts. Forgive us for all our sin. And Father, we ask it now that you bless these young people now, Lord, in our mind. Continue to be in every need. But through the Lord is our shepherd, and we shall not want. The Father, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit down upon these your people. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Father, for our pastor, Lord. We ask that you continue to bless him. Continue on knowing now, Lord, for the time of his hour. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we ask that you bless his wife today, God. Bless the Lord in the mighty name of In the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. For everything that you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, give a high praise to God. Come on, give a high praise to
Make that better for me. Come on, y'all give me praise because you know that you're so bad. But you make it better for me. Yes, I'm there. I'm there. I need 
times a week. And enter it, sorry, and she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the baby leaped in the womb for joy. Verse 45. And blessed is he, or blessed is she, that believe. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from. Father, we thank you now for this preaching and teaching moment, for this time of impartation. We pray now, God, that this word today will sink deeply into our hearts, minds, and our spirits as we believe it, receive it, explore it, apply it, and share it. In advance, we give you all of the love, all of the glory, all of the praise. What's in Jesus' name that we pray? Every heart said, Amen. Let me see the presence of the Lord. Last week, we talked from a subject, making the right move. It's so important to the imperative that even now, Thousands of years later, after the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I think it's important that we be conscious of the fact of the blessings in simply making the right move in our lives. Mary, the mother of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, when she had been instructed by the angel Gabriel that she was to bring forth the Son of God, Mary simply made the right move simply because she was a virgin and she was conceived of the Holy Spirit. She was a virgin. She knew no man. But she was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. And because of that, we must understand that she was probably ostracized, ridiculed, the street committee talked negatively about this young girl, perhaps around 14 or 15 years of age. But she made the right move because she journeyed from where she lived. And because of the dictates of the Holy Spirit, she moved some 60, 70, perhaps 80 miles uphill, mountain territory, to visit with her cousin, Elizabeth, who was carrying the forerunner of Christ by the name of John the Doctor. And she moved there. She made the right move. She was searching for consolation. <clears throat> she was searching for confirmation. And she was also searching for companionship, simply because of people in her hometown probably had a name on the six hundred <laughs> as being a virgin. And now, pregnant. She made the right move uh, because she left where she was to get confirmation, consolation, and companionship. And she moved quickly to where her cousin Elizabeth was. Brothers and sisters, oftentimes we must understand of the promise of our move. When God says, 
says move, it's good to move just like that. Amen. Don't ask questions. Don't, don't consider the street committee. Don't consider the negative people in your lives. When God says move, in order to make the right move, sometimes you have to move yeah. promptly. Yeah. Yeah. Move promptly. And she had an encounter with Elizabeth. Now, today, we want to speak from these words the right message. Mm -hmm. When you make the right move, it's important that you deliver the right message. Uh -huh. Let me take a sidebar right here because I believe there are ever been a time that the church needs to make or deliver the right message is now. Amen. Because there's so much chaotic things going on in our world, in our nation, in our communities, that the church, the call out ones, the FLC, the body of Christ, need to deliver the right message. Because the world needs the right message. Amen. Yes, it's so, it's so important that we who have what the world needs. It's so important that we understand that we are God's workmanship. We are God's mouthpieces. And that we must deliver the right message, especially in this festive season that we call it Christmas. I believe that this shine light on the fact of the importance of delivering the right message. Now we understand from last week that Mary made the right move uh -huh. to go to Elizabeth uh -huh. for confirmation, consolation, and companionship uh -huh. as she moved promptly. Uh -huh. So now when she gets to Elizabeth, her cousin who is six months pregnant uh -huh. with John the Baptist, Elizabeth delivered the right message. Oh, yeah. Now, it's important to deliver the right message because remember, there are people who may approach you who need confirmation. Yeah, right. They may approach you because they need companionship. Yeah. They may approach you because they need some consoling in their lives. So it's important that we first have the right message yeah. Yeah. and we deliver. The right message. Uh, yes, my brothers and my sisters, it's so important that the church today, regardless of situation and circumstance, regardless of how dark it may seem, we must continue to deliver, to hand over, to discriminate, to present the right message, to present, to hand over the correct message. And over to distribute, to present the correct, the good message, the good, a good communication. Yes. It's so important because oftentimes this time of the year, instead of us delivering the right message, <laughs> we have the tendency to deliver the wrong message. Amen. Because our focus get off track. Mm -hmm. Our focus is on materialistic things. Our, our focus is on, 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 on the parties and all of that and forget about the Prince of Peace. Yes. All right, yes. The wonderful yes. counselor, yes. the mighty God. Yes. We must make sure that we deliver the right message. In this text, when Mary came to Elizabeth, Elizabeth had the right message for her cousin who was now carrying Savior of the world. Mary's arrival and salutation at the house of Elizabeth and Zachariah resulted in she and Elizabeth speaking forth two of the six greatest songs associated with the incarnation of Christ. Amen. This is called one of the six songs. And, 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 and Elizabeth was the one who spoke into the life of Mary. Sometimes, regardless of who you are, 
Yeah. But you're carrying. Yes. You need a good message. Yeah. And you need the right message. Amen. Amen. Let's look at the first of these songs, which is in our text. It is called the Beatitude. It was given by Elizabeth, the cousin of Mary. It was a message of encouragement. Encouragement to a cousin Mary about her situation. Mm -hmm. An encouragement she could not expect from the folk in her hometown. Right. Mm -hmm. Could not expect from the folk of Nazareth. Remember, she was engaged or espoused to Joseph, but was not married. She was called a virgin, but now she shows up. Pregnant. Good job. Yes. You can imagine what the street could be. Mm. Amen. Uh, Amen. You can imagine what went out on Facebook or, 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 or Twitter. <laughs> you can imagine what 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 the the the, 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 the six o'clock news or the eleven o'clock news or, or CNN or MSNBC or. But when, when Mary got to Elizabeth, Elizabeth delivered the right message. Now she could have said, where are you going, child? Because see, Elizabeth was, was older. She was, she was well, perhaps at this time a senior citizen. Although she got pregnant with John the Baptist, but she was of the age. Now this child, 15 years old, come to her, and, 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 and she could have said, where are you going, child? How, how, how did this happen? Mm -hmm. What were you doing? What were you thinking? Yeah. Well, the first thing I want you to see in Elizabeth's delivering the right message is the speaking of the message. Now, you know, sometimes, especially now, we don't speak. We text. Mm -hmm. uh, we email. Mm -hmm. But it's important sometimes to get on the phone and get to the person and speak. Amen. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know it's easy to text. And there's a time I would text. When you text, I ain't texting back. <laughs> but it's the thing of the present. But sometimes you need to speak Amen. like it. Amen. So notice the speaking of Elizabeth to her cousin Mary. It's in the first verse, verse 42. And this, this verse says, as she spake out with a loud voice. Mm -hmm. The word translates speak or speak out in the text means to speak up. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The word loud is translated from the Greek word meaning matter. This emphasizes that the message which Elizabeth spoke needs to be given distinguished proclamation. It was important, so she spoke up. She spoke loud. My brothers and my sisters, God's message is not to be mumbled mm -hmm. in his proclamation. We have a message about the same or dying world. We can't be mumbling around and talking silent. It is to be lifted up yes. in clear, plain, hearable words. Yes. Yes. The text says she spoke. I don't mean she spoke up. She knew by the dictates of the Holy Spirit that Mary needed somebody to console her, to confirm her, and to be a temporary companion. Uh, companion. So we notice the speaking of the message. The second thing I want us to notice, and this is very important, is the spotlight or the emphasis of the message that Elizabeth gave to Mary. Sometimes we go to our peers, we go to our family members, we go to them for help. They don't speak up. 
They don't say something good. They say something negative. Child, suppose, suppose that when Mary got to Elizabeth, Mary Elizabeth said, Child, you know, your whole life is ahead of you. Why don't you go get it at a boy? She could have said that. Don't think that abortion wasn't going on. You're going on since then. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. So she could have said that, but 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 but, but notice the spotlight or the, the emphasis in the message. The emphasis in the message is the second clause or the B clause of verse 42. And said, and she spoke out the loud voice and said what she said, bless a thou among women and bless. Now, I said earlier, she could have said something negative. Yes. Where's your husband? Hmm. Where's the man? Who was it? But, but she said, blessed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Blessed art thou among women. I told you on last week, women was part of this. We try to push them aside. Every person after Adam and Eve came from Israel. A woman. To my knowledge, Adam and Eve was the only one created. Only humans created. The first two sons came in and were came from Eve. Seth, the next son came from so, 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 my emphasis here is, is that the women was part of maneuvering in the midst of the master's life. Now, God didn't need to use the woman. He could have used remote control when he brought Jesus here, right? Mm -hmm. but, but he used the woman and, she, and he used the women. Blessed are thou among women. Mm -hmm. 
Now, that didn't show up first in verse 22. Let's go back to verse 28. And when she saw him, saw who? It was the angel. Gabriel came to Mary, told her about what she was going to happen. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of sanitation this should be. You see that? Okay. All right. So that, that's not it yet. Let's go back to verse 28. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, hey, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Watch this. What did he say? Bless a thou among women. So Elizabeth is saying the same thing that the angel said. Hmm. You see, God is not an author of confusion. Mm -hmm. He's a big plain enough right. for you to understand it. So Elizabeth said, blessed are the, uh, blessed are the beneficiary. Blessed are thou among women. Mary was the beneficiary of much divine blessing in being the mother of our Lord and Savior Jesus. It means that Mary will be honored among women for her and for her part in the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Watch this. But Mary is now the meeting between God and man. You see, some reformation or some denomination has has it so that we worship Mary. Mary is not the deity. Mary is not the Savior. Mary is the one who carried the Savior. Uh-huh. So she's not the mediator. So we don't put Mary up there with Jesus. She was the one that God used to carry the baby for nine months. Uh-huh. So, so, so she's not the mediator. Also notice, and this is very clear in the, in the text, that our text does not say Mary was blessed above women. What did it say? Blessed out among women. So that means even Mary, who was the mother of Jesus, is not above in the So, 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 so the spotlight of the message for me, Elizabeth to Mary, was blessed of the beneficiary. Secondly, Elizabeth says, blessed of the pain. Mm -hmm. Verse 42. You know verse 42? This is what he said. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb. That's the baby. The baby is the fruit of your body. Fruit of the, of, of the womb. So, 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 blessed is the fruit of thy womb. This blessed, watch this now, focuses on honor. For the child conceived in Mary's womb. This honor exalts our Savior. Uh -huh. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb. It exalts our Savior. It also exonerates or justifies the servant. You don't see it. This is what it says in verse 38. It says, And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto her according to thy word. And the angel, Mary said, Be unto thy word. Whatever God says, yes, that with me. Hmm. So when Elizabeth said, Blessed of the baby, it it, it, it exalts our Savior, but it exonerates or justifies Mary, the servant. Uh -huh. But it also examines our service. The fruit of Mary's womb was the fruit of her service for God. The fruit of Mary's womb, by Mary being willing, although it sounds strange, although it didn't look right, although it never happened before, but Mary doing what God says was service for God. You 
never see anybody where Mary said, I don't want to do it. Nope. Not like us. <laughs> God asked us to do something. He said, who me? <laughs> God don't know who you are. Mary didn't say that. She said in verse 38, she said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to what you say, Lord. If you say I'm going to bring forth a Christ child, be it. So be it. Are y'all with me? Yes. My brothers and sisters, this certainly was honorable service. Mm -hmm. So Elizabeth says, bless is the beneficiary. Blessed is the baby, mm -hmm. Jesus the Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, before I get to my next sub point, is our service as honorable as Mary's service was? Mm -hmm. I just said a few seconds ago that many times God asked us to do something, mm -hmm. and it's not on the level of what He asked Mary to do. Mm -hmm. right. And we started asking more. Is it me? Well, who do you think you're talking to? You know who? <laughs> you don't need no cell phone to know who you eat. You don't need to see your picture Amen. to know you. Amen. So, so Elizabeth, the spotlight of this message was Elizabeth blessed the beneficiary, blessed the baby, then she blessed. For that very moment, he could not enter the 
into a conversation with them because of his unbelief. His unbelief of the divine message about John the Baptist. Even the old lady, you and you the old lady, you shall, she shall bring forth the full mind of Christ, Zacharias, who is a priest, God's man, did believe. Mary, a 15-year-old virgin, believed and was blessed. And Elizabeth delivered the right message to Mary and told her. Simply believe what God said. That's what we need to grasp. That's what we need to get. To simply believe what God said. If he said it, that sells it. And he it. But it's good to believe it if he said it. Are you with me? She believed the word of God and it resulted in great blessing. Savior of the world. He's Emmanuel. 
Emmanuel. He is God with us. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. It's all right to have the tree, the trimming, and the turkey, and all of that. But Jesus Christ is a reason for the seed. Amen. He is the one that things that you have will go. Yes. Yes. Listen. She believed the divine message given her concerning Christ. My brothers and my sisters, faith in this message about Christ is the greatest blessing of all. Because if you don't believe the message about Christ, then how can you get to God? All right. I don't care if you believe Muhammad to the great prophet. We know Jesus is more than a prophet. Amen. Amen. Muhammad, then he didn't get up. All right. But I believe Jesus got up. Yes. And I know he got up because he got up in my spirit, in my soul. Yes. 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 Listen, faith in this message about Christ is the greatest blessing of all, for this faith results in our eternal salvation. Amen. And no blessing is equal to the blessing of eternal sal Amen. salvation. Amen. Yeah, salvation means to be delivered, be set free. But eternal salvation means to be delivered, set free from the home. Amen. That's what we're going right. Right. Eternal, not yeah. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, If you want an eternity in heaven, if you want an eternity with God the Father, it's imperative and important that you believe what God said about his son. Amen. You can't make me doubt it. Uh -uh. I know too much. About it. I know that he still make me like house all I know he still make ways out of nowhere. I know he can make God be clear. He's my sunshine on a cloudy day. I know too much about him. That's why we who know him, we can deliver the right message. He lives a new God. Yes, yes. So we have talked about speaking. She spoke. The spotlight was on Mary being blessed. Mm -hmm. Blessed of the beneficiary, blessed of the babe, blessed of the believer. Mm -hmm. Now, last but not least, but he'll be last, is what I use as a term as the subservience of Elizabeth's message. What that means is the honor in Elizabeth's message to Mary. Where is that, Pastor? Well, look at the next verse, verse 43. And which is this to me? Elizabeth's talking. This is a song. And which is this to me? That the mother of my Lord should come to me? The honor that Elizabeth Gives Mary. Mm -hmm. Now remember now, last week we talked about Mary making the right move and going to Elizabeth because she needed what? Consolation. She needed confirmation. She, she needed perhaps some companionship. Now when she get there and, and, and as she greeted Elizabeth, now Elizabeth began to speak life really into the life of Mary. Mm -hmm. She honors don't you think that Mary felt a whole lot better yeah. than this she did when she first got yeah. here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. In Elizabeth's message, Elizabeth's message is much, in the message, is much humility. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth's humility is seen in her self conscious to the mother and to the master. Where's that? 
Well, she said, if you don't look carefully, you will miss it. Hmm. And what is this to me? The mother. Because Elizabeth says the one, remember earlier that the baby is yep. yep. The one the one who is the mother of the baby is So she calls the one conceived and married, my Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she honors Mary as being the mother, but she also honors the master mm -hmm. yeah. as being her Lord. Mm -hmm. Let me pop there for a second because many times it's Christian, especially the new age Christian, mm -hmm. they will receive. The Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Mm -hmm. But they won't receive him as Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, they receive him as their Savior because he, they want to be saved. Right. But they receive him as Lord because when you receive him as Lord, that means that he has authority right. over your life. All right. So Mary says that yes, I'm honoring the mother, mm -hmm. but I'm also honoring the one who all right. Who is my Lord? Elizabeth actually bowed before Jesus in her spirit because she saw him as her master. Mm -hmm. She saw, she believed, and see when you believe, you can see it. Yes. She believed, she saw. That because she believed, and she believed what God had told her yeah. about her prayers. Mm -hmm. She was carrying the forerunner of Christ, and Christ is coming. All right. So she believed, and she honored the mother of Christ, and she also honored the master who is Christ. Mm -hmm. The last thing I'm going to say is that all of this, I believe, Put a smile on Mary's face. Uh -huh. Because Elizabeth delivered the right message. Mm -hmm. My question to us what message will we deliver mm -hmm. during the next couple of weeks? Mm -hmm. What message will we be sending to our loved our families, our friends? Not just happy holidays. Because guess what? Some of the bad holidays can make you happy. All right. You don't believe it? Yeah. All the time. All right. Make you happy? Can yeah, make you happy? Some people get excited about the fireworks, get excited about the birthday of our nation. Birthday of our nation for who? Birthday of our nation for some folks. Yeah, y'all know the story. We get, we get excited about, but any any holiday. So happy holidays don't work. I was telling my wife uh, yesterday. I believe once they take Christ out of it, they're going to be. All right. Yeah, they can say happy holiday, but when they stop, they can take Mary out. They can stop saying Mary Christmas. Mm -hmm. When they take Christ out, we take it's no longer Christmas. Mm -hmm. Then I'm through with it. All right. Because Christ is still the reason yes. for the season, and we would be here All right. if it had not been. Yes, Lord. Amen. God is Amen. Amen. Yes, he did. Amen. Yes, he did. So I believe you put a smile on 
Elizabeth's face. But Omega's face, but it also put a smile on Elizabeth's face. Mm -hmm. So Elizabeth, and I conclude on today, didn't give this song with a frown on her face. Right. I believe it was given with delight. Mm -hmm. yes. Because she knew within her heart that she was giving Mary the right message. Joy abounded in the song. Oh, yeah. The song was called by the presence of Christ who was in the womb mm. of Mary. That's why the text says when Mary got there and greeted Elizabeth that the baby leaped mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or the babies leaped in the womb. And the text also says that Elizabeth So don't you think that not only put a smile on Mary's face, but put a smile on Elizabeth's face because she had delivered the right message. Don't it feel good when you know you've done something good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you know it feel good when you, you are given and you give and you give and you understand the principle? If you give and you give, you're going to get Yes. The joy was called by the presence of Christ who was in the womb of Mary. The greatest joy. The best joy is the joy when one finds Christ. Yes. I believe that Elizabeth was excited that she was able to deliver the right message yes. to her cousin. Some people won't do like that. Amen. <laughs> Show up to, if you want them, they'll tell you where to go. <laughs> they never leave. <laughs> but her cousin delivered the right message and told her, baby, you're blessed. Your womb is blessed. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're blessed because you are the beneficiary of being the mother of a savior of the world. Yeah. And blessed is he that's in your womb. And blessed is you because you believe what God says. Yeah, Amen. Yes. 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 Let's focus this festive season on making sure that we cast out the negative thing and begin to speak positive. Amen. Begin to lie. Amen. Someone you may be doing bad to somebody else, <laughs> but you still can speak yeah. positive things yes. in your life. Yes. You can still deliver the right message yes. and tell them that we celebrate this festive season because of the Lamb of God mm. who came to this world to take away the sins of the world. And no sin is too bad. Mm. God will forgive you. Yeah. Exception of the master of the Holy Ghost. Yes, yep, yes. Anything that you have done, anything that seems bad than bad, God will forgive you because of his yes. sin. Amen. Amen. Yes. That is the message of the church today. We have forgiveness. We have an eternal life. We have restoration. We have repentance because Born again. Lives today because he's seated yes. on the right hand yes. of his father. Yes. Not just sit down doing nothing, but he's seated there to make intercession mm. right. for you and I. Yes. When we mess up, Thank you. Jesus is saying to the Father, yes, That's your child. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Isn't that good news? Yes, yes, sir. That's your child. You have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. That's the message to the world to think that our Savior who was born still lives. Yes, he is. Yes. Still lives. Amen. Live. Amen. Yes. 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 Yes.
Yes, yeah. 